Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now, I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger of the Dragon's Den, and one of the hosts of Between Taraminas on ON TV. Of course, um, very interesting weeks coming up. I mean, like, happy Thanksgiving to everybody, you know what I mean? You got the last week of November, which is the last week of football season, which means Ford Field is looming. Also, you got girls basketball starting next week, which is going to be very interesting, you know. And of course, we all got the Lions. Um, but first, we, first we're going to mention today. Um, we got football, of course. Um, we had three teams in the state semifinals. Um, of course, um, only one OA team remains, and that's Clarkson. They're in the state finals. They're taking on um, Celine. Um, they ended up um. Beating East Kentwood pretty pretty handily in that one. Um, when you look at 35-13, and then Harrison, of course, losing a heartbreaker to East to him. Muskegon Mona Shores 25-24, and the shocker of the of the day of that game of that um matches I thought was Southfield losing 31-7 to Warren D. LaSalle. Um, that was to me one of the most um shocking games. But we're gonna mention each three each three of these games and. Re- Recap them all, and also mention the um, preview. Of course, the um, Division One State Final between Clarkston and Celine. Um, of course, for Clarkston, this is second second straight year the Wolves are in the state finals. Um, you know, they're in the they're an overwhelming. I think they're an overwhelming favorite in this matchup when they take on Celine. Um, when you look at it, of course, we're going to recap the first two first. Um, when you look at what happened in that Harrison Muskegon Mona Shores game, I, it was shocking to say the least. Um, of course, um, Harrison I thought dominated that game against the Muskegon Mona Shores. They took their quarter, they took their top two quarterbacks out of the game, in in that in, in that matchup, only to give up a seventy eight yard um touchdown pass, you know, late, and then. And then Muskegon and Mona Shores give the Sailors a lot of credit. Gambled on a two-point conversion and ended up um, winning that game. But also, I gotta give credit to Harrison, of course. Um, the Hawks and their quarterback, um, Javon Shaw. Javon Shaw, of course, he played in that game. A lot of people say he was gonna be out for the playoffs, but he ended up playing that game. I thought he played all right, you know, during the um, limited time that he had on the field. But um, when you look at Harrison, of course, I thought. And there were a lot of people on the Muskegon Mona Shores side. They said that Harrison's a dirty team, you know, and that bothered me because you know John Harrington's a great man, and those kids on Harrison, they're not, they're not a bad, they're not bad kids at all. I mean, you look at Harris, they play the game hard, they play the game the right way. When you look at, unfortunately, you know Muskegon Mona Shores are a team in the west side of the state. They don't see a team from the east side or any team from the OA as much. Of course the OA White is one of the most physical leagues in the in the entire um in the entire state. You know, not to mention also you got the Ottawa Kent Black, of course that's the M division Muskegon Mona Shores is at. But when you look at that game with Harrison, I thought that the Hawks played um they played well in that one. I thought, you know, until um but they had a chance to pull that game away uh, except they fumbled the ball at the one yard line, which that was just kind of a shocker to notice that one, and then Muskegon Mona Shores ended up going down and winning the game there. I mean, Harrison had this game. They controlled the tempo. I mean, there's no doubt they did over there at Novot. But Muskegon Mona Shores found a way to win that game. And if they would have, and if you think about it, if they, if, if they didn't, did not convert on that two-point conversion, I think Harrison wins that game. And, the, and the, they'll be the team that we talk about going to Ford Field. You know, not Muskegon Mona Shores, you know. That was a game I thought was perhaps more shocking to say the least when you look at that one was um Harrison unfortunately losing that one in a tough match to Muskegon Mona Shores and um you know now Harrison unfortunately you know they're going to be they're heading the off season but they got a lot of upside hanging into next season you know they're still going to be a good football team you know when you look at Harrison heading into that um heading into next season of course um Next game we're gonna mention. I was very disappointed to see what happened over at um, over at um, no, that's the correction. That game with Harrison was at Howell, of course. Um, I said Novi earlier. The game at Novi was Southfield and Warren D. LaSalle, 
And that game, I was I was stunned to say the least. Very very much stunned to say the least. To look at what happened to Southfield, how do you get whoop thirty one to seven by Warren D. The Sal? I thought, in my opinion, Warren D. The Sal would be emotionally spent after beating Birmingham Brother Ice in the state in the in the regional finals last week at Berkeley. I mean, that was just stunning to see what happened there. I was surprised at this point that Adrian Curry got shut down in that one. Also surprised that Southfield secondary got exposed in that game. Um, it was kind of a shocking, shocking end to a shocking result when you look at the Blue Jays um, in that one. I mean, like, I thought, you know, when I look at when I look at the pass that Southfield took in the districts, you know, having to destroy Detroit, they destroyed Detroit Martin Luther King at Detroit. Um, they went and beat Oak Park. It was a heck of a game there. And they went and smothered Wyandotte Roosevelt. Um, and to see them lay an egg against Warren D. LaSalle, of course, it was tough to see. You know, now Warren D. LaSalle is not a bad team. The Pilots are not a bad team. You know, but um, I thought, in my opinion, this was a game that I thought Southfield could have just won that game. I just think that the Blue Jays could have just, they had to basically, I know Southfield would have had to play perfect against Warren DSL, but I was disappointed the way Southfield laid an egg in that one. They played a murder's row schedule. They, um, of course, you know, the Catholic League's a very tough league, but still it's not, and it still was disappointing to see what happened over there. And Southfield, Basically, like um, I was surprised that Southfield um did not play well in that one. It was kind of a um, you know, when I look at the Blue Jays, you know, the season they had. Of course, they lost um, they lost to West Bloomfield. Of course, they um lost to um, they lost to Orchard Lake St. Mary's early in the year, and then of course um, they and then of course, but they and they lost another tough one to Hare. I think they beat Hare. They beat Harrison. Um, I don't have my notes with me. Um, but um it is what it is when you look at Southfield. Um the Blue Jays had a I mean like but I was surprised, you know what I mean, with South well Southfield ended up coming to the playoffs. I think they were six and three, ended up beating um ended up getting a huge I mean like it was it was kind of like a um what surprised me was their secondary got exposed in that game, you know, and of course they let they let the quarterback of Warren Hill South just like burn them. And um, when you, it's pretty much. I thought it was. It wasn't as similar as the Harrison game. I thought, but it was still like a mind-boggling effect that I thought personally that um, Harrison. I mean that Southfield just could not. And it, Southfield's the bigger team. They were the faster team. Warren D. South was. You know they had a lot of heart. They competed in that game. It kind of surprised me that um. That Southfield got outplayed. They got outcoached, I thought. Um, they got and in that one. And unfortunately for Southfield, I thought Southfield was gonna go to Ford Field this year, you know, because I think they would have had I thought out of my out of the best chances that I thought personally, in my opinion, I thought Southfield would have had the best chance to go to the state final. But gotta give credit to Warren DSL, the pilots, they played him um, they had a played a good football game, they played a good game plan. You know, they fought, they shut down Adrian Carter, made Reggie Harris forced to throw the ball, of course. But the surprise to me was the defense that um, you know, that secondary at Southfield um had um, you know, that division one backfield, that division one secondary was exposed in that one, and it kind of bothered me to see what happened in that game um over there at Novi and um to see what happened there. It was it's tough to see what happened over there, but um uh, you know, Warren DSL and Muskegon Mona Shores, of course. I'll be an interesting Division Two final there. Um, my early projection there, I'm probably going to lean um, Muskegon Mona Shores, I think, because um, I think they're going to beat Warren DSL. It'll be close, though. And the last game we're going to mention, of course, is um, in Division One. you had Clarkston against East Kentwood. Um, this game, I thought, you know, a lot of people look at this matchup as, you know, it was a good matchup, you know. East Kent was very senior lane. They were basically like going up in the up in the up, and then they won the Ottawa Kent um, Red Division. Of course, they shared it with Rockford. Of course, um, Rockford of course lost to Hudsonville, and Hudsonville got beat by East Kentwood. But 
they they early on against Clarkson, I mean, like um, their coach said he didn't like to look at film, you know, because he assumed Clarkson was going to be a um, a passing team. You know, yeah, Clarkson's a passing team, but you forgot to mention they have a running game. You know, that's something that um that was something that I didn't I thought East Kentwood got him caught off guard was Clarkson had a good running game and you have um, Nolan Erickson who's starting to take the emergence of the number one tailback. You got Centris Williams, of course, um, who's a good change up back, you know, but um, it was surprising to see that Clarkson go up 21, nothing early in the game. And that basically was your whole ball game was those first, um, that first nine minutes of the game. That was your whole game. You know, Clarkson scored a touchdown on their first, um, their first drive. Of course, they had a nice long touchdown, and then of course they had an interception by Chewins, by Cole Chewins, who's going to Miami, Ohio. And then, um, then Erickson took that one in, and then of course Zazula actually played well in that one. And then Zazula ended up getting hurt in the second half, and they say, "Hmm, we can, we don't want to take, we don't want to risk you, DJ." And then let's put Nolan in there. You know what I mean? Nolan Erickson ends up running for another. For another two touchdowns, you know, so it was kind of shocking to see what happened in that game, especially because East Kentwood had a very, they were not a bad team. I mean, like they had, a, they were big and to see Clarkston basically just do that to, um, to a good East Kentwood team, you know, they, um, they shut down the running game. Of course, um, East Kentwood had two very good, uh, he had a good running back in there, um, they just literally shut him down, forced East Kentwood to pass. Of course, that's not usually one of East Kentwood's um, main fortes is to um is to um throw the is to run the is to um throw the ball. And Clarkson basically did was they made them they made them look one dimensional. And you know, and and that's what people have done. And that's what people have done when they play Clarkson all season. Clarkson's made them one dimensional. You know, I mean, like. You know, that's the reason why they've won 26 straight games. You know what I mean? If they win, if they win again on Saturday, I think it's, it's going to be 27. Do I think they're going to win 28? I don't think so next year because he played McComb Dakota week one and you're placing a lot of talent. But, but when you look at Clarkston, um, you know, this is a good opportunity for the community of Clarkston basically to, um, to say, you know what, these are the two best teams that Clarkston's ever had. You know, Kurt Richardson's done a magnificent job with this team. Of course, um, what he's done, of course, he got a lot of good talent. You know, I'm surprised also that DJ Zazula, you know, a lot of people I've I've heard from about why he's not gotten a scholarship, you know, to a Division One school. I can tell you why. I mean, like a lot of a lot of people, I bet you a lot of D1 schools are afraid. To give a to give a guy like Zoo a scholarship, even with a good quarterback, good player, problem is the size. You know what I mean? When you look at the size of the Zula, you know what I mean? He's really not that big at all. But um, you know, when you look at him with what he can bring, you know, he can throw it, he can run it, you know. But basically, if you look at it, um, when you look at Clarkson, this is they got a good they got a good enough team, you know what I mean, to um basically look at and say, you know. And what they, and what they, what they did against East Kentwood was probably one of the most um, shocking, shockingest um, games I've I've heard. You know what I mean? The, the way that they um, controlled the line of scrimmage, they dominated East Kentwood, and um, you know Clarkson right now. This is a dangerous, dangerous Wolves team. Um, you know, but you know with Clarkson, you know, I a lot of people expected Clarkson to be here. You know what I mean? But um, be it going to state back to state finals. I mean, like um, you know, they play in a um. Of course, the red this year was not a um. Red was tough this year. It was a better balanced league, I thought. West Bloomfield had a good year. Um, you look at Oxford, of course. Um, Orion had a really off year. I think next year is gonna be the year for Orion. But um, but um, when you look at um, when you look at the um games that um Clarkson's played, you know what I mean. The Wolves, they're battle tested and um. It makes me wonder, you know what I mean? You know, does Clarkston, you know what I mean? They're going to be, I think they're favored this this weekend at Ford Field um, when they play Celine. Um, when, um, in that game, in that game, you know, when you look at Clarkston, um, you know, the key, I think of that game is going to be, um, inter- it's going to be interesting. Can Clarkston um, 
throw the ball on Celine, of course. Um, when you look, at, we're going to preview that game shortly here with Clarks and Celine, and um, you know, for the Division One final, of course, it's going to be very interesting for Clarkson. Um, playing Celine, um, the Hornets, of course, they just knocked off Detroit Cast Tech last week. <coughs> Excuse me, thirty to fifteen. I mean, like they found a way to contain Mike Weaver, their star running back. You know, the problem when, when I look at the matchup for Celine, the problem I have here is can Clarkston contain? It's, can Celine contain Clarkston's running game and also their passing game? Clarkson's got a very good passing game, you know, and I don't think Celine's defense is as good as people think, you know. Celine, this is the best defense I think Celine's going to be seeing all year when you look at Clarkson, you know, the best offense, you know what I mean? You got a good quarterback in DJ Zazula. You got a very good, but let's not forget, Celine beat Canton earlier in the year at the regional final. I mean, like, I don't think they're going to be afraid of Clarkson. I don't think they're going to be possibly scared of Clarkston. But I just think when I look at the game with Clarkson, the problem that I have for Celine is gonna be you got a good you got a good quarterback, you got a good running game. Problem is is your passing game. And you're playing a two quarterback system, which is gonna be an interesting dynamic when looking at this game. Um I just think when you look at Clarkston, I think Clarkston right now is probably the more complete team right now. Then Celine, I think that Celine still got some holes. I mean, like um, last week, of course, Mike Weber, um, you know, he had a heck of a game against them. Celine, well, he did have one touchdown. He was shut down by Celine's defense. You got to give credit to the um, Hornets team defense and him. Um, Joe Palka has done a very nice job with the um, with the Hornets. But when I look at this game here, I just think that it's going to be a huge issue. I think for um. For Celine, especially because you got more balance, you got to deal with. Um, of course, Clarkson still is the defending Division One state champions. Um, when you look at that one, um, I just think when you look at the game here, for sure, um, in this game for Division One, I like Clarkson to win this one um, because of the um, because of the balance on offense. It's because of the um, battle on defense. Um, it's also you got to deal with the um, adversity. That um and you know it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. I mean, like basically, but I just think when you look at the matchup, I think if it was Detroit Cast Tech, it would have been a better matchup. But the problem with Detroit Cast Tech was the difference was between Detroit Cast Tech and Clarkston is Detroit Cast Tech is one dimensional. They rely a lot on the running game of Mike Weber. I think you know Rodney Hall is gonna be a good quarterback for for the technicians. But the prop, but I think the um. Issues J. Ru Campbell had hurt this team clearly because it forced them to change their offense um, around, and um, it basically took away a um, versatile threat in Mike Wheat and um, J. Ru Campbell, who, um, of course, he's um, of course he had some legal troubles, and um, it is what it is. And Ronnie Hall's gonna be a very good quarterback, I think, for the technicians next year. You know, but when you look at when you look at Clarkson. I just think that Clarkson's got more balance. You know, DJ Zazula, Nolan Erickson, Centris Williams. You got um, Austin Angeler. You got Cole Chewins. And then and then you got in their defense court. You got Adam Mack who can play a line. I think Maddock um, is going to have a huge game here. Um, and you got Cole Chewins. You got um, Jack Millsap who can also play. Um, I just think in the end I like Clarkson in this one. Um, I think they're going to win by two touchdowns. Um I think it actually take it back and be worse than two touchdowns. I think they're going to win by three touchdowns. Um, I think Clarkson's going to win handily, and they're going to probably win their back-to-back state championship. You know, very interesting new on Mike Weaver, of course, D. Kaming from Michigan. Um, you know, I still think Brady Hoke gets fired this week. You know what I mean? So um, I think it'll be interesting to see um, what happens, what goes from there. Of course, um, with with him, you know what I mean? I still think... I still believe my heart, you know, this is my own opinion, you know. I still think Mike Weaver is going to go to Michigan State along with John Kelly. Then they form a very deadly backfield. That's just my opinion, you know, but that's nothing OA like. Um, okay, now, when we come back here on OA now, um, we're going to talk um, Deja Dinkins, of course, um, going to um, from leaving from West Bloomfield to Adams and the impact, what it causes on the Lakers here on OA now. <laughs> We 
you on a Habitat home? I love working on my Habitat home. Soy dueño de una casa de Habitat. My neighbor is a Habitat homeowner. Being a Habitat homeowner has changed our lives. My mortgage payment for Habitat is less than what I paid for rent. Habitat for Humanity of Oakland County currently has homes available with mortgage payments lower than most rent payments. If you or someone you know needs decent and affordable housing, call 248-338-1843 or visit our website at habitatoakland.org. Welcome back to Only Now, Sammy Tamir, blogger of the Dragon's Den, and one of the hosts of Between Terminus on Owen TV. Um, we've got a very interesting, we've got go girls basketball first here um, before we talk wrestling. Um, very interesting news coming out of Rochester. Um, of course, um, Rochester Adams especially, because now um, you may want you may look at probably one of the most deadliest starting fives, I think, in the um, in the OAA and maybe even the um, maybe even some in the state this year. Um, when you look at Rochester Adams this year, um, you know, they got a new coach or in a new league, the OA Red. Of course, the Red's a tougher league than the um this year, you know, but um of course new coach over there, but you're still gonna have a very, very dangerous team when you look at Adams. Um, but they just got emerged up, I think, with the emergence of Deja Dinkins um transferring over from West Bloomfield to um Adams. It's a um interesting a move, I think, you know what I mean? For the Highlanders, I mean, like, and, and also, what does it does do for the Lakers? You know what I mean? So, um, we're gonna go with the Adams side first, of course. For Adams with Dinkins, it's a huge, huge addition for them, because now you look at Adams. You know, what I mean, you don't have to put the pressure on him. Ryan Awusu, who was supposed to be our starting point guard coming into the year, you know, you can move Awusu over to the point. You can move Raven to the three, and then you got. And of course, you got Olivia Aragros, who's a very good soccer player, at your four. And then, of course, you got the girl going to Northwestern next year, and it's Amber Jamison at the five. And that's going to be that's one of the most I think one of the most dynamic starting fives in the OAA when you, for sure when you look at Adams, what they have. I think the impact that Adams is going to bring is going to be huge. But when you look at the league, of course, you know you ask yourself, you know. You're gonna you're in a very tough league because you still got to deal with Southfield, Lathrop, Clarkston, Harrison is in there. I mean, like it's not gonna be an easy league when you look at the red. But I think with Dinkins over there now in the red, I think that um it's gonna be a very interesting matchup, especially how she matches up, especially with Antoinette Miller against her like her type over at Southfield, Lathrop, and of course you got the Bellows, you got Jameson, Eric, and. You look at the red, basically, you and especially when you play Stony Creek, when you have to deal with Maria Zandy, you know. So when you look at Adams, I mean, like, this is a huge, huge coup, I think, for the Highlanders to bring in a girl like a, um, like a Deja Dinkins. Of course, um, you know Dinkins can shoot, you know, you know a lot. But you know, well, for Adams, you know, you can also move Dinkins to the shooting guard. You know, with her, it's basically when you look at Adams, it's like you're moving – a girl over from the um, point guard position to the shooting guard position. Um, you know, I mean, you can also experiment with the Wusu possibly playing point guard. You know, I think that um, with that impact, I think that um, you look at a Wusu and you look at um, you look at James. I mean, like, I mean, a lot of people are already afraid about a Wusu and Jameson already. You know what I mean? What what the those two girls are going to bring? You know, but um, the key now is now you're going to have a huge threat to the outside. You're gonna have a you're gonna have a good one. You have a talented one and um a wusu. You got and, and Dinkins. You got him um, a wusu at three, and he got um Jameson at the five. I mean that's that's not a bad problem to have, especially you know. But the problem with Adams is you're gonna be senior laden. You know what I mean when you look at Adams. Um, you know so, I mean and they do have a good program coming up. I mean like, but not to the extreme of the talent that um a wusu Jameson are going to have along with Dinkins, you know, I think that could be probably the best threesome in the OAA heading into the year. And that, and that's saying something when you look at a team like Adams and, um, you know, but they do have an interesting game to start. You know, they do, they do, they still got to play Rochester, Stony Creek. Um, they got Orion on the schedule, I think, um, which is going to be interesting right there. I mean, like, I think that's going to be an interesting matchup right there. Um, but, when you look at Adams, I mean, like, 
this is going to be a team I think that's going to be a a dangerous team. You know, I'm not sure where where I mean, where are going to start the year off? I mean, like um, I mean, like I'm kind of leaning Adams right now as the um, perhaps one of the top top three top four teams in the league heading into the year. You know, I mean, I mean, like um, but um, with Adams, this is a huge coup getting Gage Dinkins over from um, from. At, from West Bloomfield, you know, but if there's one person's loss is another person's gain, one person's gains is another person's loss, and there's another OA team that suffered in, from the Dinkins transfer, and that's West Bloomfield. You know, the Lakers, of course, you know, a lot of people had expectations around the Lakers. You had um, Rachel Harnish and Taylor Pierce um, over there, you know, but when you look at West Bloomfield for Matt Hilbers, it's going to be a very, very tough challenge. You know, because you don't have that point guard that you can rely on, you know what I mean, that can carry you in games. Of course, Dinkins, I know, is a shoot-first guard. And to see her go, it's it's tough to see that. And um, when you look at a team like West Bloomfield, um, you know, I don't know. It's going to be a huge loss, I'll bet you, for Matt Hilbers and his crew. You know, but in your, and you're playing in a very tough league, also the OA White you know, where you're dealing with Oxford, Orion, you got, we got Avondale, you got Bloomfield Hills, Troy. I mean, like, it's not going to be an easy league when you look at it. And to lose a girl like Adeja Dinkins, it's going to be a huge impact anywhere when you look at that loss. I mean, like, what Dinkins gave West Bloomfield was she can give you a two, good two-point shot. She can shoot it from the outside. She can go inside. She can penetrate, you know. And, um... To see a, a girl like that leave, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a tough, it's a tough loss, I think, for um, for her. And it's um, I don't know what made her go there. You know, what I mean, go to Adams. You know what I mean, like um, but um, when you look at the situation that they had over there at West Bloomfield, you know what I mean. I thought personally, West Bloomfield, you know, they could, I mean, like you know, their JV freshmen were not, they were down, but they got a very good player coming up who's an eighth grader next year. I mean, like, that's going to be a player to watch, I think, next year, you know, when you look at um, a team like West Bloomfield, you know what I mean? That that class next year, I think, is going to be a very, very good class for Matt Hilbers, you know, and I had a talk with him during that preview day. I said, I mean, like, um, he told me he was very high on um, a couple of these girls, you know, like, like I am at Orion, you know what I mean, of the eighth grade class, but, you know, but we'll see what happens, you know, when it comes over there, but, um, but for West Bloomfield's sake, this is a really, really devastating loss for them, losing a girl like Deja Dinkins, who, um, you know, but um, but it is what it is over there when you look at it. But for Adams, it's a huge, huge coup. I mean, like, um, I'm not sure how this will impact when it comes to district time um, in March. Um, I still think when I look at the um, district over at, um, at West Bloomfield, it's, I mean, over with West Bloomfield with Lakeland, you got Wall in the Wall Lake schools over there, Wall Lake Central, Wall Lake Western, Wall Lake Northern. Um, you know, it's still an open district. You know what I mean? It's still a wide open district over there. You know, but um, it does hurt not having her, not having Dinkins there. I mean, like, I'm not sure if this team's a district final team, but but when you look at it, when you look at it in that situation, I think that um. With with West Bloomfield, it, I mean, like they still got a chance. I think at a district championship. I mean, like because I just think that the um that the rest of Wall Lake schools are not very good, and then Lakeland's probably gonna be the best team. I think in that district heading into March, no doubt about it. And then when you look at the girl, I and mean, look at the um Adam side of things. Of course, they're at the Orion District, tough district with Stony Creek, Clarkston, Oxford, and Orion in there. And um, Stony Creek's also in there, um, along with Rochester. But um, it's a, it it makes that district more interesting when you look at it because you have. I still feel like you have at least four teams, at, at least five teams. I think that can win that district. You know, Stony Creek's gonna be very very competitive. I think Orion's gonna be competitive. Oxford's senior lane. Yeah, Adams is senior lane, and um, you got um. Clarkson also, you know, a senior lane, but they got a very good freshman coming up, and um, Molly Nicholson is going to be a very, very good player for um, for for um, Clarkson heading into the year. But um, 
when you look at the situ- when you look at what Dinkins brings into that district, you know, you know, that district playoffs, you know, she's gonna be a very dangerous guard, you know what I mean? There's gonna be a lot of good guards in that district in that league in that district. You got Hannah Hamay of Lake Orion, you got um you got Sherilyn Bannis of Oxford, you got um Maria Zandi of Stony Creek, and you got um you also got Zoe Schultz at Rochester, and um you also got um and also you got you know, you got Ashley Staggs over there at Clarkston. Um, you know, I'm very curious to see what Staggs does this year for the um, Wolves. And, um, you know, but Dinkins adds another dangerous guard in that district. I think the key would be the matchup. I think no doubt when you look at the matchup that Dinkins is going to give you is she's going to give you a lot of problems. When I look at her in the regular season, I think she's going to give you a lot of problems, especially when it comes to the league play because – um. Because when I look at when I look at games, you know, when I look at the games of Clarkson, I think um, when I look at the Clarkson game when they play them, um, I don't think Skag is going to have an answer for um for Dinkins. Um, Stony Creek game can be very interesting. The problem that I have for Stony Creek is going to be the interior with Jamison. Um, later game I think is going to be a per- good battle, especially. But the key to that game I still think is Dinkins, of course, going up against Antoinette Miller. I, I don't think Antoinette Miller is that good. Being honest with you, I think she gets a lot of hype. I think she's all hype, in my opinion. <coughs> and um, you look at a um, game like, um, excuse me, there my cough there. I mean, like um, a little bit of the weather, but it's all right. Um, but when you look at the other games here, I think that, um, you know, games in that league, North Farmington, of course, new coach there. I think it's going to be a very interesting um, dynamic there. Um, you got Megan Carter, who's a very good player there. And then you got... Um, and then you got when you look at um, and then of course you got um, it's a four six league, so it'd be an interesting um transition. And then of course you got Harrison, excuse me, of course Tim McLash, of course very good team. You got um, you got Amber Steffens, Kristen Nelson, and um, and Kyla Rowland. Um, when I look at that game with Harrison, I think it's going to be a good good matchup. You know, I think that um Harrison matches up well with them. I think Harrison matches up well with Adams, but they um. It'll be an interesting matchup to see what happens. I mean, like, because, you know, those two teams are going to go at it with each other. I, just, I just think it's going to be a good, good matchup. I think it'll be a good, good year, especially in that red. It's going to be a very interesting year. But I think with Dinkins, back to Dinkins, I think she's a huge addition for Adams and for West Bloomfield. It's a tough loss for West Bloomfield. But all hope is not lost in Lakerland, especially with the um, eighth graders right now in the middle school. You know, it's going to hurt them this year. But next year, you know, it would not surprise me if um those two um if those if that eighth grade class is gonna bring a huge, huge impact to that West Bloomfield team heading into next year. Okay, now when we come back here, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna talk about the um wrestling previews here on Away Now. Prescription drug abuse is a national epidemic. The new in way to obtain drugs is through parents' or grandparents' medicine chests. Removing prescriptions from your cabinet is the best way to keep drugs out of the hands of our young people. We've got to work together to protect our teens, our seniors, and our environment. Clean out your medicine cabinet today. Please participate in Operation Medicine Cabinet and drop off your unwanted or expired prescriptions at one of our law enforcement drop-off sites in Oakland County. We can't ignore this situation anymore. Welcome back to Only Now. Sammy Tyrion Blogger, the Dragons Den, and one of the hosts of Between Terminus on On One TV. Of course, um, of course, I thank On TV for being here um, today. And um, you look at the um, recaps of last week. Some um, at the um, of course hockey season's underway. Of course, um, of course, keep an eye on the Dragons a little bit. They're starting off the year a little slow. O one and one. Um, they did tie Livonia Churchill, and then they got destroyed by Novi in the um, play in the. Um, in a tournament, so it's unfortunate there, you know what I mean, like, but, of course, Rochester United is one of those teams, I think it's going to be a very good team to watch, and I also think that, um, you got some teams like Oxford, Clarkston, um, Stony Creek is an interesting one to watch as well, and, um, you got Bloomfield Hills United, um, so we'll see what happens coming up into the year of hockey, I mean, like, um, 
you know, it's an interesting league, you know what I mean? Lake Orion always gets a lot of good talent there, you know, they should be one, they're one of the favorites, of course, um, and of course, we just had swimming and girls state finals happening um, last week as well, um, when you look at it coming into the year, I mean, like, swimming is going to be an interesting team to watch, especially, um, especially this year in the girls. I mean, boys would be curious to watch this year. you got some interesting teams to look at. you got Boat Grove, Seaholm. Um, you got teams like Orion, who's going to be up there. And, of course, you got um, got swimming teams like Stony Creek and, um, you know, who are going to be balanced as well. But I still think when you look at boys swimming, I think that the two at the um, early favorites, I think three favorites would be Bloomfield Hills, Seaholm and Groves. I think those are the three early favorites right now in swimming. When you look at when you look at when you look at it in the boys part of it, heading into the regular season, um, no doubt about it. Um, sport we're going to talk about today, of course, is um, previewing today is wrestling. Um, of course, wrestling very unique sport. Um, it's not like your typical WWE type. You know, I do wish at times it would be. You know, but you know. I'm I'm kind of disappointed a little bit. A lot of people view wrestling as like a um, it's a tough sport, and it is. You know what I mean? You got to be tough. You got to have guts to do it. You got to basically just come in there and have like a swag to it. You know what I mean? Like um, there's a couple of schools I know that don't have wrestling programs, but when I look at teams, I think that are going to be good this year. You know, I look at at least ten, fifteen teams, ten teams may be good. I feel like two or three of them may have like state powerness and um when i look at a team when i look at a team no doubt in wrestling i mean like um it's got to be tradition it's got to be honor it's got to be determination you know i think the best wrestling team right now in the oaa i think it's oxford because when you look at the wildcats they have the resume they've won a state title they've played they've wrestled very well they've they've done this is a good enough team i think in oxford i think that can um that can repeat, um, that can do some damage again this year. Um, another team I think to keep an eye on, of course, is Clarkston. I mean, like the Wolves, you know, they have, they've had a good wrestling team for a long while, good wrestling program over there. Um, and I expect them to be a juggernaut this year. A team that I'm curious to watch this year, no doubt, is Southfield, the Blue Jays. You know, this is a good wrestling program here to, to look at heading into the year. Um, with Southfield, um, the Blue Jays, you know, I know they got a good coach or well coached. This is a good, improving team. You know, they're a team I think to watch for this year as well. And then you got um, West Bloomfield, of course, they had a really good year last year, had a very good individual star, went up winning a state title. I mean, like, um, and West Bloomfield is a very unique program. It's a good program to watch, especially into this year. I mean, like, and then, um, you look at a school like Hazel Park, the Vikings is the um, Hazel Park. You know what I mean? Give some love out there to Hazel Park. I mean, like um, they got a good wrestling program, I think, over there. When you look at the Vikings, um, when you look at Hazel Park, I mean, like um, it's I mean, like they've had some balance. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then of course, let's look at um, Lake Orion. Of course, you know they got a new coach in there now. Um, out is Corey Kaczynski, and in is Jeff Smart. Um. You know, it's a it was an interesting situation last year, you know what I mean, for Lake Orion because, you know, they've had some struggles in the red. Um, you know, they've had some down years, you know what I mean? This is not like the um the bunch I remember that went to Battle Creek a couple of years ago when um Doug Klein had the program. You know, they kind of like and then like Corey Kaczynski when he took over, kind of like was in a little bit of a downward spiral a little bit. I still think the wrestling program at Lake Orion, you know, it could be, it could be back up. I think they're going to be a very good team this year. I mean, like, um, and of course you got Harrison in there. Of course, they're going to be a good wrestling team as well. I mean, like, um, when you look at when you look at it here, I think the best team I think that has a shot at going to the states this year, I think is Oxford because when you look at the Wildcats, I mean, like, you know, it's a tough situation. They got the wrestlers to do it, but you got to deal with Davison. You know, Davison, I feel like it's the top, one of the top wrestling teams in the state, along with Rockford also, because, like, Davison and Rockford are probably two of the most premiered wrestling programs in the state. And um, you got Oxford, Clarkston, I think, are really close there. And I forgot to mention one school, Rochester Adams, you know, the Highlanders. 
This is a team. Adams had last few years. They've had really good wrestling wrestling teams, also there. And of course, you got Rochester, who's also a very very good wrestling team. You know, when I look at Rochester and Rochester Adams, it's a rivalry. You know, but it's also a good. I mean, like you look at rivalries there. It's like yeah, it's very unique. You got a lot of respect for each other there when you wrestle. Um, Adams is a unique team. Rochester, I think that um, I expect Adams. I expect Rochester to make deep runs this year. And when you look at it here, I just think that those two teams are going to make make some noise heading into the um, wrestling season. Um, I still think early on, I think the favorite, though, I think the best team I think can go to the States is Oxford. But can't count out Rochester, Clarkston, Oxford, you know, in that bunch. You know what I mean? But also out of state, you got to focus on nobody. Detroit Catholic Central, who's always good as well. The Shamrocks, of course, they're always talented in that bunch, of course. Um, and then you look at a, um, and then of course you look at you got um, you got some interesting teams. To look at you got Berkeley, who's got an interesting team. Of course, Southfield, of course, I feel like it's the best team in Southern Oakland County. No offense to Hazel Park, but I feel like when you look at, it, I still think Southfield's the, the um, best Southern Oakland County team. Mid Oakland County team, I probably would say West Bloomfield, and then the Northern's part, I probably would say right now would be Oxford. But you, but wrestling is always, you know, I mean, it's interesting because you look at it. There's a lot of unex, there's a lot of expect, there's a lot of unexpected like um expectations when you look at wrestling, and um, it's very unique when you look at wrestling heading into the year. Um, another sport we're going to talk about. This year, besides wrestling, of course, is competitive cheerleading. Of course, um, cheerleading, very unique. Um, very unique coming into the year. Got a lot of good teams in there. You had last year, you had Stony Creek, who was a um, Stony Creek, Orion, of always cheerleading powerhouses. Rochester's a cheerleading powerhouse. Um, when you look at when you look at wrestling, I mean, look at cheerleading, I mean, like, it's very unique when you look at it. You know, I got Troy Athens. It's had a, had a nice year last year, of course. Um, you know, I'm curious to see how they do this year, of course, with cheerleading. Um, Clarkston is in the white this year for cheerleading. It's kind of a surprise along with, um, I think, Oxford's in the red. Um, and then you look at, um, I mean, like, I still think right now the best cheerleading school right now, I would say in the OAA, I, I think there's three teams clearly that, think, uh, that fit that role, and I think it's Lake Orion, Stony Creek and Rochester. Rochester's had a successful program for a long, long time. They've won. I remember during the um two thousands when when they and they won numerous state titles over there. And um, you know, it's like any year you expect out of competitive cheerleading, you expect Rochester to be one of the favorites. You know, they've always performed talent. They've done magnificent. You know, this is a good enough team. I think that Rochester. You know, they always are, they always look like they're going to be in the Delta Plex every year. You know, it was kind of a shocking last year that um, Rochester did not go to the Delta Plex. And it was kind of a shocking situation. Probably was thinking a couple of years ago, thinking last year, but it was kind of a shock a couple of years ago, you know, that if you don't see two, at least three, all three of those OA teams not in the state finals, then it's kind of an alarming thing. Of course, you look at Stony Creek. Of course, Stony Creek's won a state title also in cheerleading. I mean, like um, the Cougars are not a bad team. You know what I mean? They um they perform well. They do they do towns well. I mean, like um, you know they um they perform to the expectations. You know what I mean? Especially in that third round, which is always important, especially because that's when it's the tumbling part of it. You know, and then like and then you got Lake Orion. Of course, um, Lake Orion's a team. You know, they went through some turmoil last year a little bit when it came to coaching. But um but when you look at um but when you look at this team, of course, um Lake Orient's always found a way to be very, very good. And I still think they're gonna be very, very good this year. You know, they got a lot of talent back, you know, they got a lot of expectations, you know. I still think but when you look at competitive cheerleading this year, of course, um those three teams I think are gonna be um are the three teams to beat. I still look at the um I still look at Troy Athens as possibly a good candidate also. I mean like possible um a possible um maybe maybe a sleeping state title contender, but I still feel like in my opinion when you look at competitive cheerleading 
heading into the year. But you got a lot of other teams down there. You got you got Halo Park, who's Halo Park's interesting. You got um Berkeley's interesting. You know what I mean? Like um, you know, I mean like the, a lot of these girls, of course, they cheerlead hard. They always compete hard. You know what I mean? Like they um they train hard. I mean like, I mean like, but um. It is what it is. I mean, like, um, I expect a very strong competitive cheerleading season. I still think Lake Orion's one of the favorites in the red and the, um, and the jamborees and all that. But when I look at the other side of things, I think Oak Park, I think Gross is a team to watch this year in cheerleading. I mean, because like, they had a really nice year. Oak Park had a really, really nice um, cheerleading tournament. I mean, like, cheerleading crew last year. You know what I mean? But um, but um, we'll see what happens um, heading into the year. Um. When I look at it here, I still think when you look when it comes to the Delta Plex in March, I still think that the big three, Lake Orient, Stony Creek, and um, Rochester in competitive cheerleading, I think are the three best teams in that one. But I think Troy Athens is a sleeper. But also you gotta watch out for um, you know, but also I mean like those are the three top teams, I think, because you gotta deal with Macomb County and Macomb County it's going to be, it's very, very tough, especially when you have to deal with teams like Stevenson, Thrilling Heights, Stevenson is up there. You know, they've always had powerful cheerleading teams as well. So I think they're going to give, they're going to give, I think, the East Side OA teams like Stony Creek and Rochester everything it can handle, especially heading into this season. Okay, now when we look at here, my final thoughts heading into, um, heading into the day, um, you know, when you look at the OA Red for when you look at football next year, of course, um, it would not surprise me if Farmington and um, Groves moves up to the white. I mean, like, it wouldn't surprise me if Clarkson wins back to back titles. You know what I mean? You know, I still think when you look at next year's team, my final thoughts heading into the year, um, heading into 2015, I think Lake Orient's going to be back. I think Adams will be back. And, um, you know, I still think, you know, Oxford's got a murderous row schedule next year, no doubt. When you look at the league, um, heading into the final stretches of the year, um, of course, um, you know, it was a very interesting football season, of course. Um, recapping the final f- football season, I mean, like, um, I mean, like, it was a, um, it was an interesting year. Of course, Lake Lori not making the playoffs for the first time since 2000. Um, that was a bummer at that for me personally, but, um, but a lot of good teams making the playoffs, you know what I mean? Like Berkeley, of course, Groves, um, you know, but um, those Ted teams in the blue. Farmington, of course, um, losing the playoffs at Oak Park. Oak Park had a really nice year under Greg Carter. And, um, you know, but my guarantees next year, my top guarantee, I think Lake Orion's back in the playoffs. Adams will make the playoffs next year, you know, but we'll have to find out what these um, transfers do, especially because there's going to be a lot of people that do transfers especially heading into the um, final stretches of the, um, especially heading into the next summer, of course, um, when you train, when you train again to maybe get back to Ford Field in 2015, you know. I mean, like, there's a lot of questions that do linger. Of course, Oxford was a playoff team last year. They got a murder's row schedule next year. West bloomfield has got a friendly schedule next year as well, along with Lake Orion. But um, we'll see what happens heading into the year, and we'll see what happens. Okay, now I'm going to sign out here, ladies and gentlemen, here. Of course, um, I'd like to thank O1 TV for, um, for a good show this week. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And um, good night, Lake Orion on OA Now. OAA Now is produced at Orion Neighborhood Television, Lake Orion's community media outlet. To learn more about ON TV, visit our website at www.orionontv.org or call us at 248-393-1060.